All right, friends, we are recording. All right. So I'll get us all started. Hello, everyone who will be watching this. Thank you for joining us for this special author story time with local authors, Haley Moon and Father Dedrick Moon. We're so excited to virtually have you here with us. And as a reminder to our guests, um, this program is being recorded so that we can put it on our social media accounts. We've got Facebook and Instagram, um, Randolph County Public Library for both. With events like these, Randolph County Public Library strive to support authors while promoting early literacy. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Haley Moon and her father, Dedrick. Um, Haley is a 14-year-old CEO and founder of the Rules of a Big Boss LLC, alongside her father, Dedrick, the COO. And her company provides empowerment books, products, services for young people and families. Haley's the author of several books herself, The Rules of a Big Boss, A Book of Self-Love, The Rules of a Little Boss, which I have right here, did the whole throw, I like that. Um, <laughs> don't let it ruin the life of the party. And she also co-authored The Unexpected Journey, Fire and Gold with her father, Dedrick. Um, Haley and Dedrick have been featured on many news outlets, all of them, television shows, magazines, podcasts, you name it, they're out there. They work with charitable foundations and organizations and partner with everyone. We are so honored to have them here with us today. Welcome, Haley and Dedrick. Thank you for being here. Hi, thank you for having us. Yes, thank you for having us. Thank you for the last oh, word. Uh, is there anything that you wanted to say about the rules of A Little Boss, a book of self-love before we have you start your reading? Um, well, you not really. You pretty much you just tell from the book with the way that we're gonna set it up. So yeah, not really. I would Go like to say something. Oh, Can sure. I? So it's an illustrated book. It's a chill. It's an illustrated book that focuses on self love and empowerment for school age children, and it's all about diversity in experiencing that self love. The diversity part. It was. I, that's why I said that the book would tell you. But you know, some everyone is not visual. So no, sometimes no. you got to tell you read them. it and explain it. Like the way that we're doing it is like- When you get my no, age, you'll get what, wisdom. No, what's <laughs> happening is like, we agreed that we were going to read and then explain what the pictures and what the intent was behind it. So obviously that's going to show the diversity day. We'll ask lots of questions about working with family. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you go for it, Haley. You enjoy it. We'll, we'll pay attention. Okay. Okay. The rules of a little boss. Being yourself as an acceptance of your own value and beauty. So the intent behind this book is this guy over here is actually a transgender child. So I wanted to go ahead and include him like hanging out and doing like more masculine activities to show that just because he was like born as a female, he still can do hang out with guys and um, be free to be himself. See how that shows the diversity easily. On the next page, it reads, you're naturally gorgeous because you're kissed by the sun's brightest rays. Now that speaks specifically to me as a kid and probably to a lot of kids. I know myself, um, I had a cousin that I grew up with named Jeremy. And Jeremy is of a lighter uh, persuasion than myself. And I always wish that I looked like Jeremy. And, you know, back in the 80s, you know, light skin was in. And it's like brown skin was not. Brown skin didn't become cool until you were in the 90s. So it spoke to the child in me and let me know that the skin that I'm in is perfectly okay and I'm beautiful just the way that I was made. Yeah, but, nice. but it's using Haley as the model as opposed to myself. Just want to say, I'm brown skin, you're dark skin. That's, that's, the, that's the term. <laughs> okay. Anyways, always be yourself no matter what and don't apologize for it. 
that's what um, I was saying about the whole like transgender character. And then his friend is over there in the back supporting him. On the next page is, oops, sorry. Experiment on yourself so you can find your own inner beauty. So, <laughs> so with me, you know, being an adult and everything, I've went through several transformations. I've tried different things um, or whatever, but I'll share the most recent one. So when I finally had to cut my hair bald because my hairline was running away from my face, my hairline should really naturally be here, but nowadays it's actually here. So when I had to cut my hair off, I said, you know, I felt kind of naked. So I decided, hey, I'm going to do like all the other cool kids do, and I'm going to grow a beard. I've never had a beard before. Wasn't sure if I could grow one. So I grew it and everything, and my beard came all the way down. It connects under here, underneath my chin, but it doesn't connect at these two points right here. So there was a little hole or a little gap in my beard, and I didn't care. I wanted to grow, grow a beard and try something new, and I didn't care what anyone said. I wanted a beard. I wanted to grow something new, and I just wanted to be different. And I loved it. Some people liked it. Some people hated it. But I didn't care. It was all about what did I like and what did I love. Eventually, I started to realize that actually having a beard made me look older than I really was because I have more white hair than I do black hair. So it's okay. You know what? I've had my fun. I've had my midlife crisis. It's time to go ahead and cut it off. And then I'll just stick with the little goatee. So, but have fun with it. Don't ever be ashamed of what other people say. Just love yourself, appreciate yourself, and experiment until you find your niche. Niche, I'm sorry. And my most recent one, which I don't really talk much about because looking back at it, it's something I would very much like to forget. But I had this one eyeshadow palette that my grandma gave me, and it had um, black eyeshadow in it. So what I did was I decided, I was in the fifth grade at this time, so I had decided, hmm, I have thin eyebrows. Let's go ahead and fill them in with a black eyeshadow. And my um, eyebrows came all the way down to right here, right here. Like it was literally like on my temple. And, <laughs> and like, I'm surprised dad didn't even notice tell me to take it off. But um, when I was at school, everyone was, looking at me weird. And I was like, why is everyone looking at me weird? Like, oh, that's right. I drew on my eyebrows. I know they look good, y'all. Don't worry. But <laughs> over the time, oh, but over time throughout the day, um, when I went into the bathroom, like it started to get now even lower. It pretty much melted off my face. So it was like <laughs> now it's all the way almost like down here to where my glasses are. So I go to the bathroom and I'm looking at them and I'm like, why were people laughing at me? And I was like, this is why people were laughing at me. And I was over there crying, <laughs> laughing. My friends were like, girl, you did not, you didn't know that your eyebrows look like that. And I said, no, they looked fine when I walked out the house. And then um, even the teacher told me to take it off because I looked silly. And I was like, no, I like it. And there, she was like, okay, just if you're okay with getting made fun of, I said, I'm okay with it. It looked fine when I came um, outside the house. I just washed some of it off right here so that it's not all the way um, keeps dripping down. And I, when I wiped it off, now it's smudged across my face. So you know what? I just left it as that because if I put any more water to it, it would just be over. <laughs> okay. I feel like so. we all have a story like that. Don't want to interrupt, but like I, I, I completely understand. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Wear what makes you happy appropriately, of course, and be proud of it. Not really much um, story behind that. That's pretty self-explanatory. You shine everywhere you go. So that's a story that's all about empowerment. You know, um, the big thing behind that is it doesn't matter if you're at school, if you're at home, on the bus or whatever, you know, you still shine. You're still beautiful. It doesn't matter if you have the most trendy clothes on or not. You're still beautiful. And, you know, the big thing is uh, unemployment has been high. A lot of people have lost their jobs. You know, kids have, may not have been able to get the Christmas presents that they've gotten in years past, may not have been able to get their, uh, their new pair of Jordans or whatever the kids wear these days. But who cares? At the end of the day, you still are you. It's not the clothes that make you. It's what you carry inside of you. And it's what's inside of you that makes you shine. So regardless of whether you had the most trendy hairstyles, clothing, or whatever, you still shine. 
So that's the intent behind that. Don't let your tiara or crown fall by making others feel bad about themselves. So that is me and that's this one girl, not really much um, like story behind her character, but pretty much like I was bringing her up on stage and empowering her and that's what that crown represents. Oh, and I'm sorry, let me go back for a second. Um, going back to the you shine everywhere you go. So I was in the sixth grade or this is the story behind that. So I was in the sixth grade and back in this time, starter jackets were it. If you didn't have a starter jacket, you were a nerd. And I had a San Francisco, <laughs> I had a San Francisco 49ers jacket that was not a starter jacket. And I got picked on because mine didn't have a little S with the star behind it. And it made me feel so bad. And my mom told me, you're still my little star. You're still my little sunshine. And I said, no, my sleeve doesn't have a star <laughs> So finally, my mom was saying, well, that jacket with that star on it costs like $100. The one that I got you costs like $75. There's really not much difference. And I said, yes, it is. $25 makes a difference. You got to have the star on. Because I kept getting picked on on the bus. But I missed the whole impetus behind it all. She said I was her starter. It didn't matter what was on my sleeve. What mattered was what she said to me. Now, I did get the starter jacket a year later. And what ended up happening is by the time I got the starter jacket that next year, it wasn't even it anymore. People weren't even wearing starter jackets anymore. And I said, man, and I walked around feeling all sad for nothing. So, you know, the whole, the big emphasis is, as I said before, it's what's inside of you and what you carry within yourself every day. It's your skin, it's your heart, it's your makeup that counts. Mm -hmm. Use haters as motivators and step around them. You want to tell them about that? So I see a lot of feminine guys on my TikTok for you page. And that's what pretty much this represents. He's not gay or anything. He is 100% straight, but he's just a feminine guy. So he was dressed up as a ballerina. And these other kids were making fun of him. But he was just smiling and laughing it off and just moving forward like it didn't affect him and that it wasn't bothering him. So... Yeah, the emphasis, um, like, well, the whole meaning behind it is to pretty much like it doesn't matter what other people like. It doesn't matter what they don't like. What matters is what you like and what fits yourself, because at the end of the day, um, as you start to grow older, these aren't the people most likely these aren't the people that are going to give you a job. These aren't the people that are going to pay your bills. So they don't really they don't matter. The next is no people pressure you into doing anything that you know is wrong. So this specific page spoke back to me when I was in the fourth or fifth grade. I believe it was the fourth grade. We had a program called Drug Abuse Resistance Education. And at the end of the uh, the curriculum, you received a T-shirt, a black T-shirt, and it said DARE across the front. And it was all about, I mean, the name says it all. It was about saying no to drugs. And, you know, back in that time, it, there was always these commercials and everything where they would crack an egg in a frying pan or a skillet. And it would say, this is your brain. This is your brain on drugs with your egg, egg being fried. Any questions? Now, unfortunately, I don't see things like that anymore. Um, I don't believe that they have the their program in schools anymore. And it used to be real predominant within schools and libraries and things of that nature. The drug abuse commercials used to be heavy uh, on TV, whatever network or whatever you think about. <clears throat> Anyway, that being said, you know, there's an opioid crisis in America. And actually, I think the opioid crisis is uh, global, whatever. And, you know, you have kids vaping and things of that nature. And there is very little literature out there uh, pushing them away from the drugs like they did with us. So the big thing is, you know, is basically to kind of try and bring that home or to revisit and say, basically say, say no to drugs, say no to peer pressure because these are the impacts or whatever that can occur to you if you mm -hmm. don't say no. So it's just revisiting those things and it's speaking back to the child that's, that was in me. When you try to change yourself to please all of these people, you will be unhappy and push away those who genuinely love you. So what that is about is like, 
when. So think of yourself as you are now, right? And then you complete and you have all of these friends and all of these people who love you. And then you change to try to fit what other people would rather want you to be. And now you're pushing away those who genuinely love you because now they don't know you anymore and they don't know who you are anymore. And it starts to push them away. Like it's normal to grow, but it isn't normal to change yourself um, for other people. So that is the whole message behind that. And treat yourself and others with kindness and respect. You want to share the intent behind that? So this one is just... Um, this one is just showing um, a kid helping an elderly black lady across the street. <laughs> so the next page is vibe sessions, a way you turn the music or put together an outfit and just allow yourself to feel your best. So <laughs> the story by <behind> that <laughs> is so Haley's in virtual school now. But before she was in virtual school and was actually attending class at school classes in person, uh, I would hear her. She would wake me up in the morning and I would hear this music just blasting. <laughs> and I would think the music was coming from that door and it would actually be coming from her. So she's in the bathroom getting herself together and everything. And she's just got all kind of music playing and everything. She's got Mary J. Blige going on. I'm going to live my life, my life, just fine, 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 I'm going to live my life, my life, just fine. So she would play this song to motivate herself to get up, get ready, and go conquer and take on the day. That's not, that's not why I played it. Anyway, this is my, it's my, it's my page. So she would play it to go to, to you know uh, get herself ready and psyched up to go take on the day and to deal with any haters or anything that she might meet on the school bus or whatever. And she would just go out. She would get her outfits together. She would experiment. She would put on some of the craziest outfits. She would even be coming to my closet stealing some of my uh, what do you call it? My oversized tees and everything. They're and she cute would just, to wear to bed. Okay. And she would just go through a series of different outfits and everything. And she would psych herself up with the music all day. So the vibe sessions are all about pouring it into yourself so you would have enough to get you through the day. That's not why at all. The reason my story. No, Next page. It's my Next story page. because it's me. Next page. Anyways. So when I would play music every single morning, I've actually been playing music every single morning for three years now. And the reason <laughs> why I do it is because I'm always sleepy in the morning. So every time I wake up, I'm like a zombie and I'm just mean all around. I just, I don't want to be talked to. I don't want to be looked at. I don't want to be touched. Leave me alone. So when I'm in the bathroom, I'm just playing music to kind of wake me up. So it's waking me up, not empowering myself. I'm just having fun while I'm watching my face. It's simply just me having fun and trying to wake myself up. Because if I didn't, I would just be bored and it would be all quiet and it would just be awkward. Stop selling wolf tickets. My <laughs> story is the truth. No, it isn't. We went from a fit, we went from a non-fiction to fiction. Next no, page. That's literally the truth. <laughs> I think I would know what I do, Dad. I would think I would know what you told <laughs> but me. You, but that's not. Anyway. Love and appreciate yourself because you're stuck with yourself. So throughout the years, the one person that you'll always have and always are going to have is yourself. So go ahead and love and pour into yourself because without it, you don't spend you don't like a hundred years hating yourself. So you have the strip of a superhero. No, no, no. Is that oops? Sorry. Don't let anyone bully you or make you feel bad about yourself. That was pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. You have the strength of a superhero. You can get through anything. Self-explanatory, too. The end. The end. Ah, we timed it perfectly. High five. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Can I just say what I love most about the rules of a little boss is exactly what you both just did in reading it is that there's a story on every page and there's something that an adult or someone who's, who's lived a longer life can bring to it and someone who mm -hmm. is fresh eyed 
and younger can bring to it. So this is more of a conversation starter than it is anything else. It's going to be these this wonderful rubric in, in how to live and embrace yourself mm-hmm. and embrace other people. I love, Haley, that you're talking about all these diverse characters, all these kids mm-hmm. that are going through something. You're bringing something to each page. It's just, it's a remarkable book for someone so young to have written. It's really, really awesome. And congratulations on it. Thank you. Yay. And we'll go ahead and maybe ask you a couple of questions. It's like a Q&A for you both, if that's all right. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So I wanted to ask, I think you talked a little bit about how you were inspired while you were writing this book. Um, but what is your favorite part about being an author and sharing your vision? And I'd like to ask both of you that. Um, hmm. Okay, so my favorite part about being an author is I'm one of those people who like, um, I like to one up people a lot. Like people who say, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. Watch me. Like the mm-hmm. only time I could ever do something I would never be able to do is if you tell me I can't do it. So like one time when I was in the gym, I, I was missing baskets left or right. I couldn't shoot a um, hoop to save my life. I was literally throw it against the wall and I would be like, oops, <laughs> I would have to go and get it and grab it to the next person because I couldn't shoot it. But one person had um, said that I had shot like a basketball, like um, a four-year-old. And I was like, a four-year-old? Oh, okay, I'm gonna show you now. So I grabbed it and then um, I put it, I threw it perfectly into the hoop. It didn't hit the backboard at all. It flew right into the basket and I was like, little kid huh and then I walked right past them like and the only time I could ever do stuff like that is if you tell me I can't do it so pretty much the same thing with this like um like it's a little bit deep like behind my whole reasoning of sharing that story but like overall um people tend to like place these um well, society tends to place these standards upon girls, like saying, oh, this is what girls are supposed to do. This is what guys are supposed to do. Girls shouldn't do that. Girls shouldn't um, say that or whatever. Um, Like more specifically, Black girls don't do this. Black girls can't do that. And I'm one of those people who like, I love proving people wrong. I live off of it. I thrive off of it. So um, writing these books and stuff, as I start to grow older and I'm like in all of these different magazines and stuff, it's my goal to be in, um, it's my goal to be in like a big time magazine, like Vogue and stuff like that while I'm in high school. So like as soon as I turn 18 and take my gap year, that's what I want to do. So, um, and I want to be having all, doing every single thing that I wanted to do ever since I was little. I wanted to be a ballerina. I have been a ballerina. Um, I wanted to be in a fashion show. I have been in a fashion show. I wanted to design my own clothes. I do do that. I always wanted to be an author. I did end up writing books. So um, over time, I started to do every single thing that I ever wanted to do. So I want to be in a big time magazine and everything like saying, oh, um, and then like also being able to prove like when I'm in an Ivy League school, I want to be like, okay, so I'm in an Ivy League school, proof that you can have brains and beauty. Once that's proving um, society wrong. So I love to have um, different things under my belt so that in the future I can carry that on with me and say, oh, but I did this, but I did this, but I did this, but girls can't do it right. So that is like my whole inspiration behind it. Love it. So for me, the big thing is, um, I'm sure you're familiar with this, uh, Sam. I don't remember the exact number, but there's this thing called the modalities of uh, the modalities of communication. And with the modalities of communication, in one sense, you have to tell people, you have to tell them in writing. Another way, you have to tell them verbally. Another way, you have to show them, and so on and so forth. And based off of the amount of people ba- and the uh, those pathways expand based off of them, the amount of people that you're talking to, okay? So the big thing is, you know, sitting here, you know, just talking to my daughter, talking to my godchildren and things of that nature, you know, they can hear me, but at some point they start to tune you out. And then they also tend to forget the things that you've told them verbally. But if you put it in writing and you put it in writing in a format that they can appreciate, 
they will never forget it. So the big thing is, you know, my time on my time on this earth is short. The time where you'll be able to see me is short. The time where you'll be able to hear my voice is short. But the time for me to be able, the time for you to be able to hear my words, see my words, and everything is finite. They can live on with, they can live on long beyond me. And you know, and the big thing is legacy, legacy impact, and the impact that you can leave on the world through your words and everything. And a lot of people have poured into me, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of people have poured into me to make me like who I am today, you know, as a uh, as a small business co small business co-owner and author and everything. And, you know, and the only way that I can pay them back is by paying it for in the way that I can pay it for in reach, reaching the maximum amount of people is by putting it into writing, having workshops like as we're doing here with you. And the big thing is, you know, all about just empowering people and setting them up so that they will have a better baseline than I had growing up and everything, particularly children. I want to be able to see them succeed and want them to go into a better world than what I had when I was their age and whatnot. Thank you. That's awesome. I've got a few. I've got Vanessa and Jasmine in. If either one of you want to ask any questions of our authors, Haley and Dedrick, please feel free to um, write it into the uh, message box to everyone or directly to me, and I'll go ahead and ask it for you, unless you wanted to raise your hand and unmute yourself and, and ask anything you like as well. Um, but I will go ahead and ask another question if that's okay while we're waiting to see if anyone else has questions. You talked about youth, you talked about, um, and, and Jasmine had mentioned in the chat, wishing that she'd had something like this, um, like this in middle school or elementary school to help as a guide, um, leaving a voice on for legacy. You're very young to be a CEO of your company with your father who's the COO. What is it like to run a business so young and to run a business with family? Um, running a business young isn't really, um, well, it's not really all that hard or all that bad. Um, it is definitely something I'm pretty humble about. Like, I tend to be a very like over dramatized everything person. But when it comes to like successes and stuff like that, the only time I'll ever really mention it is if someone like doubts me or something like that. That's really the only time. But otherwise, I'm pretty humble. And I just talk to people like a normal um, teenager would. So really, it doesn't really make me any different as a person. Um, it gives me something to carry on into the future and pass down to my kids. But what well, my future kids and my um, grandkids and so on and so on. It does give me something to pass down. So I'm happy about that. But that's more of a, a success that's personal to me. And that I don't really need to broadcast to the world. And working with him, he changes every little thing all the time. Anything on the website. Anytime I, I can be in a complete nap. I will be sleeping, knocked out, enjoying my time sleeping. And here he comes. Haley, Haley. Haley all the way across the hall. And I'm like, what? And then he's like, come look at the website. I'm like, you just updated it yesterday. And then he said, yeah, well, I updated it again. So come look, come here, come here. And I'm like, it literally is one difference. One difference. Why did I need to wake up for this? And he has a habit of always interrupting me to show me something new, like I haven't already seen it already. And then, or it was just one small change. So he literally picks at everything all the time. He's never satisfied with it. And then also, um, he's always in chats and stuff about how to sell like your books and everything. And we'll be watching movies, dad, watching TV and watching movies. And here he is in a group chat talking to people and laughing and then telling me, pause, yeah. me, pause the movie so I can talk. And I'm like, dude, there is a time when you don't need to work on um, like professionally all the time, dad. There is a time and a place. You don't need to do it 24 seven. And then he's always getting me added to group chats and stuff for authors and stuff. And I'm like, these are full grown adults. Do you know how awkward it is for me to be, to be in there just talking freely, willy nilly? Why don't you be in there and talk? So that is one like downside is him always adding me to stuff and him always talking on the phone. And then he laughs loud too. Like I can... I literally can hear him laughing outside when he's in my room. Like, 
I don't understand how someone can laugh that loud. So for me, um, she's telling the truth. I am very, uh, I don't want to quite say um, that I'm anal retentive, but I am, do have a tendency to be nitpicky. I will always see something, something that I missed the first time, the second time, the third time, whatever. And I will always say, oh, but you know, and it may not even be a mistake. It's just that the creativity in me is always going. And I'm like, oh, it would have sounded better if I would have said this. Or it would look better if I did this. So we've already decided on something. We've already got it out there. It's been out there for a week. Then I want to change it. I, like, I don't like it anymore. I like this better. Let's do this. And I'll say, hey, I need your help to help me do it because I don't know how to do it or I'm doing it or whatever. Or I'm like, I can, I can say what I want. I can visualize it, but I can't put it together. So I need you to visualize it for me. So I'm what you call a tinkerer. I'm always going to mess with stuff, mess with stuff, mess with stuff. And it doesn't matter if you tell me to don't do it. I'm going to do it anyway. I, I can't help myself because the wheels are always spinning. And my wheels always spinning in a place of creativity causes obvious frustration, um, causes obvious frustration for her um, and everything. You know, even though she's the author of this book, I was the editor of it. So me being the editor, you can imagine the iterations we went through to actually get it to a point of where I liked it and would actually just leave it alone. And even then, still looking at it, I'm like, I can still make a change. Uh, <laughs> because that's just how I am. So the big thing is, I'm always on and I'm always um, tinkering with stuff, which is the downside. But the good side is, which she didn't give me any credit for, she'll probably give it to me when I'm long dead and gone. And then she'll feel bad and she'll cry every single day talking about how much she misses her daddy and how her dad started this company with her. And she's going to want her husband to sign a, uh, what do you call it? A, uh, a prenup because she don't want him to have any parts of the company that her and her dad started and everything. But the, I say all that to say, the big thing is, even though I stress her out with my constant tinkering and nitpicking, it actually has made us grow closer. We were already close um, from the beginning and we're always going to be close, but you know, going through the, the, uh, through the, you know, the, uh, the building out a business plan, building out of books and things of that nature, planning out community events with our prep life and everything has forced us all to be able to sit down in a room and, you know, brainstorm, storyboard and things of that nature. And when we're doing it, we're not just sitting there, you know, focusing on the task at hand. We're doing it plus having fun and laughing about it, too. And I think that, in my personal opinion, it's basically forged us even closer than we would have been had we not been doing this. So, of course, there's some stress that comes with it. But the beauty on the outside is look at what we've created and what we've output as in these books or whatever, in the shirts or whatever. But, you know, those are the tangible things that you can hold in your hands. But it's the bonds that's created beyond that, which is really the true essence of what we've been doing. You can always rely on your family and your loved ones to give you feedback, positive, negative, whatever it may be. You can always rely on them to be there <laughs> for each other. Love it. Um, we've got a question from Jasmine in the chat. It's which one of the rules in the book inspired you the most? Hmm. It's a good one. Let me see. Let's see. I can say which one inspired me the most. Please do. I can take over briefly if that's okay. Sure. Says, don't, don't let your tiara or crown fall by making others feel bad about themselves. That is such an amazing lesson to learn as young as you can possibly learn it. Because I know I didn't learn it nearly as young as I needed to learn it. You always feel like you need to be taller or bigger than somebody else mm -hmm. by making them smaller somehow, but that's never the way to do it. It's never the way to stand tall. It's never the way to wear a crown. So that's, that's a wonderful lesson in the book as just a reader that I think is just remarkable. So I'll let you guys take it away. I love it. So for me, since she's still looking for me, is definitely the one about the you're kissed by the sun's brightest rays because as she... Everything that's in here is her, are her original words. I did not write any of this. Didn't help with the planning. I just helped put the, pa put the package together. 
But anyway, when I saw those, I said, wow, it took me back to 1985 when I was looking at myself in the mirror and not loving who I was and the image that I saw. It took me back to 1983 when I didn't love what I saw. It took me back to 1989 and everything where I didn't appreciate myself and everything. And it made me, you know, it's kind of like going and looking at yourself in the mirror and me trying to talk to myself, but I couldn't hear myself. And it's like, dude, love yourself. Appreciate yourself. You're beautiful. Yes, you're not as uh, tall as this person. Yeah, you're not as uh, light as this person, but you're still beautiful. The things that make you different are what truly make you beautiful. Appreciate all of those things because God didn't make any of us the same. So that was the big thing that spoke to me. It means the most because it spoke to my child and took me back in time. Okay. Anyways, since he over... He tends to over talk. So anyways, so the reason why I raised my hand was to actually like say that it brought up this one quote that I had read in a TikTok comment section. I don't care what anyone says. Social media is helpful. But um, on TikTok, I had read in the comment section, the sun and the moon are both beautiful, even though they're two completely different things. So my, my, um, but my favorite and like one that speaks to me the most is always be yourself and no matter what and don't apologize for it even though it's like the most basic thing that you can tell someone it is something that like continues to resonate with me because like i said i over dramatize everything like i tell the truth but the way i say it is dramatic like um when my dad had woke when I, my dad had woke me up today right out of my sleep i was comfortable like arm out the bed and everything head over to the side I was laying on my back I was laying wild and I was comfortable and I was nice and by rest and sleep I was in the middle of a nice dream then he comes in here with me I was like come on come on get ready and then um like since I over trauma dramatize everything that used to be I like had um sorry I had completely forgot to say like the middle of what I was saying but I would I had, when he had walked out of the room, I had lifted the cover over my face. I put the pillow over my face. I screamed into my pillow. I was over there mad because I was in the middle of an amazing dream. And I was like, fine, I'll get up, I'll get up. And then I started to text a few minutes and then I was like, okay, I'm done texting, I'm done texting. And then I got ready. And then I was like, I can't believe he woke me up. And then I just kept mumbling to myself about how mad I was about it. And that kept it on. I'm still mad about it. It's still internalized in my heart. I'm going right back to sleep after this. But um, so that's one of my over traumatizing moments. And I do that a lot with pretty much everything. I'm just dramatic like that. And that used to be such an insecurity of mine. But now that I'm confident in it, I make it even worse now. So like I would try to um, dumb it down a little bit more and try to like dial it down and keep myself calm. And I'm like, why stay calm when I could be extra? So when I'm out in public and things like that, um, I'll over here and I'll be talking to myself and people will look at me like I'm crazy. And then I'll just, I'll look at them dead in their eyes and we'll literally have a staring contest before they finally look away. And I, and I actually love doing that because I always get so uncomfortable and I'm the only one who's not uncomfortable with it. I will stare you down for at least a minute. And then after a while, I'll just keep looking and I'll just keep on staring until you look away. And they usually look away within five seconds. But I tend to over traumatize everything and tend to like, um, because I love just taking it an extra mile. If I see someone with an um, A in class, I want an A plus. If I had an A plus um, the other day, now I want an AA plus. I want to do even better than I did the last time. No, everything has to just be perfect because I like everything perfect and I like everything extra. That's that's the type of person that I am. And that's one thing that I used to hate about myself. So, yeah. So to summarize, just love yourself the way you are and don't try and change for other people's what she said. And she says that I overtell stories, right? <laughs> you said that I overtell that's stories. mansplaining. I, they, that's, they knew what I was trying to say. No, they did. No, they did. That no, was they did. mansplaining. No, they did. That was no, they mansplaining. Did. No, they did. That's one of my really? you hey, one of, the story. that was one of my biggest that's you one of my over told the that's story. one of my biggest <laughs> pet peeves is he always tries to summarize it and short it down. And I'm like, no, they knew exactly what if I said. I he mansplains me all the time. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves. It's like, hush, they knew what I was saying. 
Stop mansplaining. Well, I love that you said that sometimes the simplest things are the truest things. Like, and you said, I know it's basic. Just love yourself and don't apologize for it. It's super, it's, it's basic. You think we'd all know that. And that would just be ingrained in us, but we need to be told sometimes we need to be reminded because it's so important. Some of the most basic things are super important. So that's really good. All right. Is there any other questions that Jasmine that you've got or that we can fit in? We've got it about 45 minutes. That's usually where we cap our, our story times. Um, is there, I, I want to mention first and foremost, we have the rules of a uh, little boss, a book of self-love in our library. If I didn't say that at the top of this recording, we have this at the Ashford Public Library. We've got two copies. Um, they're in our local author section. Um, and we're so proud to have it. But for those who'd like to own a copy, where is where can they purchase a copy of this for themselves? Go on, Daddy. You like to go. Well, if they happen to live in Greensboro, um, they can actually purchase it at uh, Ben's Boys um, in Friendly Shopping Center. I think the address is 2711 Grandview Avenue. My memory is horrible, so I think believe that's it. Um, they could also purchase copies of it if they live in the Raleigh area. They could purchase copies of it from Styles Plus uh, Salon. And, you know, uh, there are other places in person that they could purchase it from. I just can't remember off the top of my head. But the best place to go is to look online on Haley's website, which is www.thebookofselflove.com. And that'll give you an anchor to different places where you can go and purchase it online to include like AALBC, uh, Barnes & Noble, uh, Target, Walmart. It's also available in, as an audio book, too. And, you know, it'll show you those different linkages where you can go purchase it as an audio book. So I know it's on Kobo. Uh, Audible and places like that. So the best place to go is to look on the website and it'll give you all of those places where you can go look and uh, buy it. But definitely want to point everybody towards, you know, Ashboro Library to be able to check out a copy because, you know, libraries are free. Um, they're all about community and everything. All you need is a library card. And the cool thing about uh, Ashboro Library or Randolph County Library is my understanding is to be able to get a library card for Randolph County, all you have to do is live in North Carolina. A lot of other libraries, you actually have to live in that uh, county to be able to get a library card. So like Wake County, Durham County, or so on and so forth. But you have a ample opportunity with Randolph County as a North Carolina resident to just get a library card, visit the library in Ashboro, visit the one in Liberty, and you can be able to grab copies of the book for free. And, you know, or if you want to own your own copy, you can get like, like I said, started a website. It'll take you to Overdrive, Target, and all those other places where you can purchase a copy. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. And thank you for the library plug. We love that. That was fantastic. <laughs> um, and as I put the bookofselflove.com in, um, in the messages in the chat, I'll be sure to go ahead and add that as well in the description of the story time when I post it on social media. Uh, thank you so much for doing the story time with us. Is there anything that you want to leave us with? Anything else that you want to say before we go? Um, no, I'm good. I do. Love yourself the way you are. You were made perfect on the day that you were on the day that you were born. So always appreciate that. Don't never try and change. If you're going to change, change for yourself only. And in changing, you're changing because you want to enhance, not because you don't find yourself as attractive, strong, or whatever. You're already enhancing the beauty that you already have. Beautiful enough to leave us on. Thank you both so, so much. And we will see you at the library. Thank you. Go ahead and click my little recording button. Wherever it may be. <laughs> I will totally edit that out, I promise. You get old. <laughs>